to Dr. Noah's ProTandem Pro NERF 2 activator update, and uh, I go through the scientific literature. Also, I have different alerts on my computer to try to find out what this exciting type of product ProTandem does. As we talked about before in some of my lectures, it goes beyond just antioxidants. It goes actually into genetic engineering, and one of the particular types of uh, uh, enzymes that basically it's able to upregulate or turn on is catalase up to 1,200%. So in this most uh, recent article here in the British uh, Cancer 2011, which is right here, uh, it's kind of interesting is that they're looking into different types of novel ways to be able to deal with breast cancer. Now, uh, breast cancer is very devastating. It's a lot of money is really spent. Uh, this is from the American Cancer Society. And as you can see here, there's really not that much change in survival from, uh, gee, 1930 to the present time. So that's not really the answer here. That's what's called reactive care. Wait until you have the problem and then it's kind of too late. Of course, holistic and functional doctors wanted to prevent that and that's what I devoted my time and effort with my patients and also the research. But what was interesting in the study here, and this is the quotation, it's, again, this is a drug journal, British Medical Journal of Cancer, states here that therefore increasing the antioxidant capacity of the mitochondria, that's which is like a little engine into your, in your cell, uh, could be a rational therapeutic approach for invasive breast cancer. So that's how powerful this is. I know they like to kind of give you the smoke and mirrors about chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery, and we can talk about that other time, about how successful it is. But once again, these natural things are just as powerful and un unfortunately overlooked because you can't patent it and no one makes a lot of money. So, very exciting. And this, uh, once again, cutting edge type of science. This just came out two days ago, May 2011. Uh, this, the role of sperm oxidative stress in male infertility and the significance of oral antioxidant therapy. What's been going on over probably the last 30, 40 years is that infertility, especially in industrialized countries, is becoming a big, big problem. It's a big industry, too. Infertility clinics can cost anywhere between fifty and hundred thousand dollars with a twenty percent success rate. So, uh, unfortunately, that's not a really an option for most people. But once again, you know, a lot of people go that way, and with a twenty percent success rate, what other industry can s survive like that? But they do. So, obviously, being a natural and functional medicine doctor, as I've helped in, in fact, probably about ten years ago, I had about five infertile type of uh, 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 couples, and they all got pregnant. So, for that year, I was uh, they kind of coined me the, the, the fertile doctor, so that was kind of fun to be able to help them conceive and have children. Uh, and, and two of them out of the five actually had spent up to about $30,000 uh, at a local UC Davis uh, infertility thing with no success. So let's get a lot of money, no results. So in this study here in human reproduction, oh that's right, that's a peer review scientific journal article, May 2011, that's right, that's right now. So that's cutting edge. Shows that you know using this particular type of approach, using a nerve two activator like Protandum, oxidative stress has a factor to play on lots of different things, and even with fertility here. Uh, and what they state here is that um, this form of therapy should be established once and for all. I mean, these are once again medical doctors that are saying that oxidative stress should be looked at and antioxidant type of therapy, and the best is Protandum. As we've talked about before, you can do the one-to-one -one from a direct type of antioxidant to free radicals, or like Protanum does, one to a million, which is indirect by increasing enzymes like catalase and glutathione and SOD, which is the more effective way, and that's why it's such a revolutionary type of product and why it has such an impact. So infertile, Protandum, so says the science. And in this kind of exciting article, this just shows you how advanced I am this is a publication, a Radiation Research Journal, June 2011. Hey, it's still May, so I'm actually going into the future. So, so this is just an early publication of, of this particular type of research article. And it's interesting, it it's actually comes from the University of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is actually the third leading cancer research center, if not in the country, in the world. Those also we've talked about is that the head of the University of Pittsburgh, a little off the topic there, but still similar like that, he, about a couple years ago, had a big memo to 3,000 of his workers saying cell phones are dangerous. Now, that was kind of suppressed. Here's the third leading researcher in cancer freaking out and actually concerned like that. But anyway, he just published, and this was commissioned by the, um, from uh, NASA and Johnson Space Center, because they wanted to look into uh, what 
uh, look into what happens to when cosmonauts and astronauts go into space, as we know is when we fly in airplanes or uh, nu around nuclear power plants, exposure to radiation, and, we, and that can cause lots of different types of problems, little things like cancer. So they commissioned this study, and they were able to find out that, you know, they would, now these happen to be mites because they're not going to expose um, 9,500 uh, milligeist uh, exposure to, to people. And they found out that the ones that were, um, those, th those on a diet of antioxidants who, who survived 30 days or longer after exposure had an 80% survival rate at 250 compared to 30% that didn't have that. Did you hear that? 80 versus 30% by taking a good antioxidant. And so protandum being the best antioxidant because it actually works on what's called indirect. It works increasing different types of enzymes that produce, like glutathione, 300%, SOD, uh, catalase, these type of you know, in, uh, in, internal type of antioxidants. So with people concerned about radiation, whether or not from Japan or just from the environment, from flying, I just flew down and gave some information to a friend of mine who's a flight attendant. There are studies showing, and maybe we can do a little uh, mini one, uh, next one we do, is that flight attendants and pilots have an increase in terms of cancer, because the higher you go up into, outer, into space, the more radiation you have. So you're exposed to more radiation, the more radiation you have, the more type of cancer that you have. So uh, as the author here said, I believe that this is the strongest pr proof yet that nutritional supplementation can truly help even the most adverse environmental conditions, outer space with radiation. So these are drug doctors saying that. So that shows you how powerful that is. So uh, when June comes around, and I predicted that in the Radiation Research Journal that this uh, article out, you'll hear, you've heard it here first in May, uh, what is it, May 28, 2011. And as we talked in an earlier uh, talk here about uh, that exciting research from the University of uh, Pittsburgh, which is the third leading cancer research center in the world, uh, and funded by the um, uh, space program in terms of being concerned about uh, astronauts going into outer space and radiation causing different type of genetic and cancer type causing problems there using antioxidants and natural vitamins and, uh, to have able to offset that and they said that this was very exciting. Well, and, and another study here showing that the flying and radiation risk, I mean, I have friends that are flight attendants and I, I really stress and give them the real research there. I know they, tr they like to play Play that down because yeah, there's real liability issues there. Is all the different pilots and flight attendants and all the people flying there, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the the airline industry, uh, just like with the nuclear uh, power industry, making it's always safe. It's just you know not the case there. I mean, come on, let's get real here. Is that the the uh, amount of radiation that's safe is zero. So any type of radiation is bad, and the higher the altitude you get, the higher the strength is. And that's what this article here uh, back a couple years ago from the American Institute of Physics. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, these are real scientists here. Uh, flying and radiation risks. Physicists call for airline industry to educate workers about radiation levels. So, and, and to maybe be fair, up until this re recent development with protandum, there wasn't a lot to do. I mean, other type of uh, what's called direct antioxidants versus uh, indirect oxidants. Uh, um, direct oxidants are like eating blueberries and strawberries, and those are great, but they have a one-to-one -one ratio in terms of how it kind of neutralizes that. Uh, our bodies produce just by itself, not considering the radiation, three times 10 to the 27th power. So that's uh, three, six trillion, uh, which is way beyond uh, how many blueberries you can kind of eat like that. So a uh, better system is using what's called nerve 2 activation, talking to the, to this, to the, um, genes of the body and producing very, very strong antioxidants like uh, SOD, glutathione, catalase, to be able to increase that by not one to one, but one to a million per second. So it's a lot more effective way. And so if you travel a lot, uh, you fly, uh, even if you live at higher altitudes, there's research to show that those have higher incidence of cancer because the higher you go up, the more the radiation has an impact, uh, to be able to think about using a nerve 2 activator like protein. Thanks. Thank you.